Hello, greetings from Oberlin, Ohio, where it's a beautiful early summer afternoon. And depending on where in the world you're joining us from, I wish you a good morning, good afternoon, or a good evening. My name is Jay Ashby, and I teach jazz composition and jazz trombone at Oberlin Conservatory. And I'm very happy to be involved uh, with this wonderful endeavor, the Arts in Motion Symposium. Uh, we have a super interesting concert uh, in store for you, uh, including musicians from around the world. Um, the focus or overarching theme for the concert is music that reflects the African diasporic influence. Um, the next two pieces we will hear will be performed live in Munich, Germany, by an ensemble from the University of Munich under the direction of Marun Sakas. Um, the group focuses on Afro-Caribbean music, and today, specifically, Afro-Cuban music. Uh, they'll be performing two well-known pieces by one of the most important groups in post-revolutionary Cuban music, Los Van Van. We will be hearing Después de Todo and Que No Te De Por Eso. And, and now, to the stage.
falta de chorar Dime tú, ¿cuál es mi razón? De tu situación
Wow, that was great. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll hear from another group performing live from the University of Munich. Uh, and in keeping with our focus on music that reflects the cultural influences of the African diaspora, this next group, under the direction of Tizian Yost, focuses on Brazilian music. Um, the region now known as Brazil was colonized by the Portuguese who enslaved the indigenous peoples as well as millions of Africans. Of the estimated 12 million enslaved Africans brought to the new world, almost half, nearly 6 million people were forcibly taken to Brazil as early as 1540 and it continued until the 1860s. Out of these centuries of horror came one of the world's richest musical cultures, one that combines musical elements of indigenous African, Western European, and later American music, which was itself already an amalgam of different cultural ingredients. The first piece that we'll hear is A Felicidade, and it's by the most widely recognized Brazilian composer of the 20th century, Antonio Carlos Jobim. The piece was originally written for um, a famous film, um, Orfeo Negro, or Black Orpheus, which uh, was a big hit in Brazil in 1959, I believe. Um, Jobim went on to be incredibly prolific uh, and is recognized as one of the founding fathers of the bossa nova style. Uh, that developed out of combining elements of Brazilian samba and American jazz. Um, and all of that is epitomized really by this piece, uh, A Felicidade. The second piece we'll hear, Loro, is written by another giant among Brazilian composers, uh, Egberto Gismanti. Egberto's music crosses many boundaries, um, reflecting elements of Western European classical music, indigenous music um, from South America, Afro-Brazilian music, and again, American jazz. Like A Felicidade, uh, Loro has become a standard in the Brazilian repertoire. And now, if they're all set up on stage, um, they can feel free to take it away. How are we doing, guys? Are we set up? Are we switched over? This is pretty impressive. I think I think they got it. Okay, good. <laughs> the logistics of it all.
Very nice. Thank you very much. And now we move to South Africa and the music of Ramon Alexander and his ensemble. The drummer you heard in the Afro-Cuban group from the University of Munich, um, Pascal Haas, recently had the opportunity to study with Ramon at the University of Stalinbosch in South Africa. And in fact, he's playing drums in the, uh, on the pieces that you'll hear. The first piece, Sons and Captains, reflects the, the characteristic South African rhythm, Goma. Uh, and interestingly, at least from, a, from an ethnomusicological standpoint, versions of this rhythm can be found in indigenous musics from all over the world. Uh, the essence of it is, is the 3-3-2 three, three, pulse grouping, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Um, and uh, it's, it's interesting, as I mentioned, that that that's, can be found in indigenous musics all over the world. Uh, the second piece, Apex, uh, leans more heavily into the jazz side of the equation um, and takes a, a journey through three distinct parts, with the third part returning to that same goma feel. Um, so... I hope you enjoy the Ramon Alexander Ensemble. Roll the tape. <laughs>
Wow, very cool. Great players, beautiful music. And now we return to the stage in Munich for an original piece composed by the, the house drummer today, Pascal Haas, uh, with his group performing Luve, which I'm told is Afrikaans for life. Uh, and this, this piece is also a bit eclectic in nature. It contains elements of Afrobeat, uh, South African rhythms, and of course, jazz. So if you're in position, you got it. Hit it, Pascal.
Thank you.